In this video, we are talking about my very first notch trip in like 30 plus years. I, I went with this guy, Theme Park Casual, just the other day. We absolutely had a blast. I'm going to go over, we're all going to go over um, the overall thoughts of that trip and just overall thoughts on knots. We're also going to dive into these price increases at Disney. The Magic Key and all this Disney stuff has been they, they announced all kinds of price hikes. We're going to talk about that. Totally not controversial in the community at all. At all. <laughs> so it'll be smooth sailing from here on here. Welcome aboard to another episode of OD55. Like I said, we were talking all about knots. We're talking about these Disney price hikes. We have a very special guest, friend of the channel, Mr. Theme Park Casual here to join us today. Casual, welcome back, my man. Hey, kids. Yeah, thanks for having me back, man. I, I had a blast when we went to knots. Can't wait to talk about it. Really want to dig in. I, we were, I was able to get some of your thoughts while we were there, but yeah. I kind of want to hear what, what, what your thoughts are now that you've kind of been able to sit with it for a little while. Great park. Great park. I was really, really impressed with it. If you could let everybody at home know where they could find you on social media, sir. Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, or X, uh, and Instagram, all of them at Theme Park Casual. There he is. Subscribe to this man. Follow this man. He does amazing, amazing work on YouTube, especially like if you're into like in park vlogging. He does a lot of Disneyland stuff. He, he does a lot of not stuff. Really, really good stuff. So make sure you give him a subscribe and show him all the love. And over here, we got George. Citrus George, the Italiano, host of the Walt Disney World Show here on the channel, Citrus Corner. Welcome back. And I love the hat, man. Look at that hat, dude. Thank you. Yeah, I'm rocking, I'm rocking the theme park casual merch. And I actually, you can't see it, but I'm also wearing the, the shirt Damn. as well. So, yeah. Got my swag on. <laughs> nice, nice. You can let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known uh, as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on the podcast, A Walk with Walt. And, of course, you'll find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's dive right in. We're going to start with knots. Okay, so Casual uh, was gracious enough. He he was able to get me into the park with it, with a free ticket. Now, Casual, was that, was that with your – does that come with your annual pass, those tickets, or has that – or is that just uh, a yeah. ticket – so yeah, basically, anytime ever, it's been, they've done this for the last several years. Um, when you do, when you renew your annual pass um, uh, early, when you renew it in the the prior year, they give you a bring a friend free ticket, and it's valid. I believe right now it's valid until like the middle of December. So, yeah, cool. so everybody that renews their pass, they get a bring a friend free ticket. That's awesome. That is absolutely awesome. Yeah, I mean that's 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 amazing. Like value. I mean, you know, with Disney passes, you know, you're not gonna get something like that. You know, so that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. They give that. Now, I want to kind of start off before we dive into the park itself. My kind of my notch journey actually started almost with a dining plan, right? Because you sent me a DM casual. You're like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, you might want to think about this. I don't know how much you eat but you might right. want to do this dining plan right i'm like okay and you're like it's 30 bucks or it's, it comes out to like 35 with tax or whatever tax and right. fees and you you were telling me like okay you pay the 35 and you get meals all day long it's like prepaid like i was like wait no there's gotta be a catch to this i mean 35 dollars. like i was joking with you like you can't even get a soda and a hot dog at disney for 35 dollars, <laughs> <laughs> and this is gonna pay for me all day yeah. It's absolutely crazy, and it did. And obviously, there's there are some um, like stipulations in there where, like, I think it was like desserts and like uh, like drinks or something weren't included. Right? right. Yeah. Not a not a big deal at all. I mean, the, it was a huge value, and uh, we took advantage of it. We ate like pretty much all day. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now I have to ask you, OG, because it happened to me. I don't know if it's a psychological thing, but I uh -huh. also got the dining plan the last time I was at Knotts, and I eat. I like when I'm on vacation, but like, I mean, like. I ate like a, I don't even know what, <laughs> like when I was out there, like every hour and a half, I like jumped from, uh, the, uh, like the, the little, uh, Mexican restaurant to the pizza over to, like uh, to the barbecue, like every hour and a half. And I usually don't eat like that. So I don't know if that's like a psychological thing because you know that, you know what, I don't have to put out 
money up front you know i already paid for it like ahead of time so you know sort of kind of like how disney does the the dining plan but on a much uh um uh relatively nice budget (laughs) well i mean yeah no i ate a lot more that day than i usually do i don't eat that but i think casual you were joking with me you were like halfway through you were like i think you've hit like seven thousand calories yeah (laughs) (laughs) but that's the thing with with the dining plan like you were saying george it it kind of puts a mental thing on you that you know what i am going to just get my absolute money's worth they are going to be sorry they sold this to me kind of attitude Mm -hmm. but what was cool i mean like for og you know yeah he had four meals but he didn't have to finish them all you know you didn't have to you know church you know get through every last bite of the baked potato or anything you know so you could enjoy it to the point to where you feel satisfied and then you're like okay i can i can move on because i'm going to be eating again you know in 90 minutes if i want to yeah and you know and then you've also got the option that okay now i can i don't have to sit there and say you know okay well i've got you know maybe one or two meals do i get the barbecue do i get the pizza do i get the mexican food you know you with the dining plate you get to try a bunch of different stuff which was kind of (laughs) funny which was kind of funny uh casual because i remember when i was out there with you when we were at knots we had just got done eating the um like at the little the little Mexican place, or you mm-hmm. ate at the Mexican place, or I got pizza or something, and then shortly after we went on. Um, I still got to get used to the names of the rides. Uh, yeah. Hang 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 time hang time mm-hmm. hang time. So and then right as we <laughs> right as we were like approaching the go up the lift hill, you said, "I'm starting to rethink my life's choices that I should have eaten <laughs> before yeah. going on this thing." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't. We didn't go on that, but I saw it, and that's pretty. That's pretty risky, like doing that right after a big meal, and that's that's a pretty intense looking attraction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, definitely. If you if you've got a, a one of the weaker stomachs, you you really should space the meals and roller coasters out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So the dining plan was a, was a great value. I mean, thirty five bucks for the whole day. That's incredible, and the food was really really good. So the first meal we got was the brisket. Um, mm-hmm. and I had like, my side was like Mac Mac and cheese. And then they give like, they have like the condiments where you can get like barbecue. You can get like, you know, spicy barbecue, which is what I opted for. And, um, it was great, man. I'm like, Hey, casual. I'm like you, I like the burnt ends and all that. And oh yeah, mm-hmm. ours were pretty crispy. And I like that. You yeah. Know? Yeah. They, they always kind of like, I don't know why, but it seems like whenever I ask, Hey, can I have the burnt end right there? They're like, really? <laughs> and I'm like, hey. Isn't that like one of the like primo pieces when, <laughs> oh, you're, yeah, having, when you're having yeah. smoked barbecue? It's like well, and, and, you got to have the burnt ends. And yeah. that's the one thing I appreciate with Knott's because they have that classic all-American style amusement park food, even though right. they still consider themselves under the belt of theme park. But I love Americanized amusement park foods. Like sometimes like uh, not to, to knock on Disney, but they come up with like these weird little concoctions, like for Instagram photos or, you know, something that looks all fancy schmancy and you take a bite out of it and it tastes like shit. You know, me, I just <laughs> love just good old fashioned, you know, whether it's brisket, ribs, mac and cheese, coleslaw, just, just give it to me in a nice big trough and then I'll, I'll, <laughs> eat it till the cows come home <laughs> yeah no it was it was fantastic i mean that was the first meal i had that with like a beer um and it was just it just hit the spot dude that was fantastic and then the next meal we had was what was the next oh i had the baked potato with chili on it yep and that was good it was basically just a baked potato with chili and there was like cheese on it and i think like chives or something mm-hmm. um fantastic and then we did the uh Third meal was the Mexican restaurant that you're talking about, George. Mm-hmm. We ended up doing that. And uh, with that, I got like, it's basically like if you guys have been to like Chipotle, right? <clears throat> you can get the burrito or you can get, you can opt for like the bowl. So I opted for the bowl and they had this really, oh man, it was like um, l- like lemon or lime and cilantro rice. That's what I got. That's <laughs> what I got. Yeah, that's so it's- good. It's phenomenal. It was so good. And that was just like the bed of like, you know, that was just like the bed of like the bowl. And then, and then I got like beef and like spicy and like lettuce and all the stuff. And it was just so good. And it was very much this Mexican place. What's the name of that casual? What's the name of that place? Uh, that one's Casa California. Casa California. It's very, very Chipotle-ish, you know? Very, but- very on brand. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 and it's it's fantastic. It was another great meal. I mean, I, going into this, like, okay, so we had the brisket. It was great with the mac and cheese. Fantastic. We got the baked potato. Which have you ever had one. barbacoa? No. Barbacoa. What is that? Now barbacoa, it's it's sort of like a shredded type meat, sort of kind of like um, as if you were to have like pot roast, sort of speak. Mm -hmm. But it has a very um, I don't want to say spicy, but it has like a little kick to it. It's really good. Okay, nice. Yeah, I have to check it out. I have to check it out. So th th then after that, um, the next meal it was we got ice cream the Sunday yep. with the churros, right? Yep, the churros Sunday. And these churros, okay, me, Kevin and I were standing there. We were watching them make these churros, okay? Watching them make their handmade churros. And they're not like Disneyland churros. I swear to God, this thing was like this thick, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it was so big. Wait, Fantastic. So, so, so what you're saying, OG, is not is well in doubt? Very. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. These churros were, were, were girthy, to say the least, but... <laughs> oh, I mean, they were just, they were freshly made. And then it was in that little um, Sunday. Oh, again, another chef's kiss meal. Mm -hmm. And the last food item that we had that day was the pizza with the uh, garlic bread. It was great. It was absolutely great. So the food, the, the quality of the food was very tasty, very good. And then you only paid $35 for it, you know? I, I get no complaints in that department at all. Absolutely fantastic. You'd pay thirty-five dollars just for the the Mexican bowl alone, <laughs> like I at a normal he? regular. No, like just at a, like a regular thing. Like even if you go to Chipotle, if you just to say get like a like a, a bowl and with a side of chips, a drink. Oh, you know, yeah, if you're, you're eating for two, you're spending like almost thirty dollars there anyway. Oh, easily, yeah. yeah. Those bowls mm -hmm. at like Chipotle, I think they're like fifteen, sixteen bucks. So you get a bowl and you get like a drink and, and and maybe like a side and you're yeah you're pushing like dang near thirty bucks just for that <laughs> you know so g great stuff now let's talk about the park so we uh, we we started walking up to the park already I'm like okay this is really cool because we entered in um, and it was like a lot of places a lot of like regional parks one of the issues that I have is like they don't do like heavy landscaping or whatever right it's kind of like it's like a like magic mountain it's like a it's like a parking lot and there's rides but there's not a lot of trees i turned to casual i'm like i'm loving this because we get out the car trees everywhere just everywhere in this entryway i mean there's gore with the giant pine trees <clears throat> fleshed out like really full i love that i love that going into that what did you did you notice that george i mean when you went like how lush it was were you surprised by that or not so yeah, much yeah that was actually that was like one of the first things i noticed with my first time going to knots it kind of had its own seclusive way where it's almost like everything kind of the perception was okay it has that classic kind of themed american amusement park too it's sort of like where you go in and you do see the trees and it kind of reminded me walking through dca kind of going through um uh grizzly peak you right. know i love i love when the trees just kind of block everything out and you're just within that moment you know right. you don't you don't look over here and you see this you look over there you see that it's those sight lines it's those fucking sight lines i can't stand them so <laughs> it's, but but honestly i i love how as you use the term OG, like that lush greenery right. type of kind of like uh, foresty type of type of feel. I, I love that. No, that, and that took me aback. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, that wasn't what I was picturing. Um, now casual, you've been there a million times, so you mm -hmm. probably are, you're probably so used to it by then, by now, you know, but it's yeah. pretty cool though. Right. I mean, it's, 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 it's a, it's a unique feature. I think for a regional park, a lot of, a lot of regional parks don't have that kind of, that kind of element to it. I don't think, you know, yeah, th that's that's one of the things with with knots. It it it's one of the weird little gems in Southern California. You know, it's it's a semi big name, if you will. You know, it's pretty famous, uh, but for for whatever reason, sometimes it, it has that bad reputation of oh, it's not Disneyland. Yeah, but it 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 has so much to offer, and if you if you stop and just take a look at where you're at in knots. Most of the time you're near Disneyland level of oh, yeah. and quality. Absolutely. And I think a lot of that is in due is due to Matt. We met being the CEO of Cedar fair. 
So he understood the Southern California market and he knew what kind of a, a absolute treasure they have with knots. And once he, he became CEO, there was a shift in knots to get away from just being that coaster park. And it, it went back to its roots and became that, like you were saying, George, that all American, you know, theme park that, you know, offers the classic stuff and done with a very high quality. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And it, it's sad when people kind of just kind of poo poo things just because it's not Disneyland. Like I'm, I'm a proponent of at least trying stuff. Like you don't have to love everything, but you should at least try it. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, for me, Knott's is a different animal in, in a lot of ways where it's like Disneyland is the behemoth, the, the world where like, you know, everyone on the planet knows Disneyland. Right. And Knott's is like what you were saying, um, casual, like this gem. Right. And a lot of people outside of California or even Southern California might not be familiar with knots. It's a smaller product, but it offers something unique. Like you said, there is a, the theming is very close to Disneyland, but it also offers its own unique kind of flavor. And it right. kind of has almost like a like more of a punk rock edge to it than Disneyland. And I like that about it. It's kind of like if you're comparing restaurants, right? Like, oh, man, I love going to Ruth Chris Steakhouse. It's a nice you get a nice steak. It's fancy. It's just oh, man, that thing is awesome. And I also like going to the mom and pop like Thai place on, on Ventura Boulevard, right? Two mm -hmm. very different things. I like the food of both though, right? And they offer two different products. Well, just because Ruth Chris is a chain and, and is more well-known doesn't necessarily mean that <clears throat> the mom and pop Thai place is bad, you know? So right. Knott's is very much more of that mom and pop feel. And you kind of yeah. feel that energy when you get in there. And it's different than Disneyland, yeah, but that doesn't necessarily make it bad. And it's it offers something fresh. You know, like, you know, if, if you're a Disneylander, it's it's kind of cool to go in there and like not know where you're going. Like, you know, I can go through <laughs> Disneyland with like a blindfold, you know, but mm -hmm. not. It was new. It was exciting. It was like a dopamine hit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was, it was it, it's a fun little park. Yeah. So we, we walk in and the first thing we the, the first little area is at Ghost Town. Yeah. Now, this is like Frontierland times 20. Right. And. George, were you kind of taken aback by that when you first went in there? Like how like crazy good oh, this looks? Oh yeah, absolutely. Because when I looked at that, I thought this is how I want Frontierland to be. Right, right. Like like this is like if they were to do any kind of update or expansion, it's like not to take it away from Knotts because Knotts has their own thing, and I love how you can separate Knotts from Disney, but kind of like having that those kind of aesthetics you know i love like those briny gulch type of like where you you're, you're just waiting for like the tumbleweed to be blowing <laughs> off in the distance and, and you know kind of hearing that that spaghetti western like clint eastwood type of uh type of vibe i i love that and then you have like the citizens you know walking around you know they're um uh you know they're walking around with pails of water and they're they're chasing one another and it's like it, it actually that is like the immersive experience that i kind i wish that disney not not kind of wish i do wish that they would kind of bring back within their own sections of the lands because that's what walt wanted and that's what was kind of griping him like when when they would have like the tomorrowland performers over in frontierland and frontierland going over into tomorrowland like they have their own set of cast members strictly within that section because it takes away everything else around you because you literally feel like you are in this western town and i feel like that uh knots does a, a really good job at it now the first time i went to knots we went into the birdcage theater but it wasn't open the the second time i went was it still closed or was it opened uh, um, no, it is open, and we unfortunately we didn't get to see the show that's in there. It's right now. It's a, a Halloween um, show by the Bob Baker Marionette Company. Nice, and it's a fantastic show. I'm dying to get back there so I can go see that show. Last year, the show was so fantastic, so adorable that I, I'm like, like I said, I'm dying to see it again. I think I think we watched the one that they had in Fiesta Village, George, when you guys were out. Yes, yes, we did. Yeah. yeah, and I love yeah. those kind of little shows, especially the one in the Birdcage Theater, because it has the um, sort of like the hoopty doo vibes, right. but mm -hmm. actually taking it instead of having it at a resort, you're actually putting it in the theme park, sort of like how they did at the Golden Horseshoe, which I still wish they would do something with that. I know they have the piano player and everything, but God, that would get so much good vibes going in there. Because oh, so, yeah. I mean, I love the Birdcage Theater. 
it, it just the thing I love about what they did with Ghost Town is it just feels so grounded and so much more just so much more authentic than Frontierland. I mean, I mean, uh, Frontierland almost feels plasticky compared to what, what they have here with the ghost town, you know? And I just love what they did with it. You have the, the beautiful train. Oh my God. I was fanboying over this train all day long when I was there. Beautiful, gorgeous train, which casual, you mentioned it's, it's a life size. It's a real train, life size train, yeah. you know? Yeah, um, and those are actual cars that were from the Denver and Rio Grande. So those are those are actual, you know, hundred year old cars or so. And then also of watching a lot of your um live streams casual, you know, when you walk around knots, you you um you use a term and I forget what you call it, like when they have like these little hidden uh little hidden secrets or gems like where if you look into the windows you can kind of see something that you didn't know was there until yeah. you actually get real close and it's like it's the attention to detail that yeah, i do yeah, the, i do love yeah the little peek-ins that they have the, yeah. yeah yeah those those are and that's that's part of that immersive you know feeling and and it, it's it's not a big deal, you know, adults most of the time you're gonna you know look inside okay yeah there's some you know mannequins in there but when you're a kid that's that you know, sparking the imagination, getting the brain to, you right. know, start putting, you know, stories behind what you're seeing and let your mind be creative, be imaginative and, and start to pull you, pull yourself into the whole story and the feel and vibe of ghost town. Well, and the great thing too casual is even if you don't necessarily stop at the window to look inside, even if you're a passerby, right? If you're going down these little alleyways and you just pass by and you hear the, the dude in there. What was his name again? I forgot. Something. Um, the oh, guy Sleepy we were talking. Joe. Sleepy Joe. Right? Sad Eye Joe. Sad Eye Joe. Sorry. Sad Eye Joe. So even if you don't necessarily go to the window and see Sad Eye Joe, if you, when you're walking by though, you're hearing Sad Eye Joe from inside the from inside that little room, right? Yeah. So all part of like the sensory experience that you're having that adds to the theming that it, it's almost like that audible like the like audible kinetic energy almost right it kind of adds to this whole energy of the land you're walking through you hear the the the, the um the sad eye joe you have the great buildings the the, the kind of like the dirty like you know walkways and stuff like the like the dirt walkways and it's got a blacksmith everything. the blacksmith over there it's banging away I mean, it's it's really really cool you know and uh, speaking of that blacksmith, the, the kid in there was great. He was kind of explaining things to us. Really great cast member, you know? Yeah. Um, we were joking around with him a lot and stuff. It was kind of funny. I, I made a joke about, hey, can you make Thor's hammer? And he was <laughs> <laughs> and he was like super serious, like, no, we don't build weapons here. It was great. But it adds to the theming, though. When you're walking through this little thing and you see the blacksmith go and then you hear um sad eye joe talking it's 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 felt crazy authentic um the two rides that we went on in that land were the mine train and the log ride so george mm -hmm. have you been on both of those sir yes i have and i as as simple as those rides are i think that's what makes them so unique right. it's like rather than it's just telling it's like a basic formula just to tell a basic storyline where it's just especially with the, <laughs> the the log ride you know i mean like you try to throw something like that back into disneyland it's like <laughs> hashtag problematic you know but it's <laughs> but um but that's what i love about it because it's like it has like that with the music and the the the, the guys and the, the funny caricatures like going through and it's and it the ride starts to pick up based off of like what is surrounding you and then the music picks up uh, within the log, within the log ride. So as like the, the log starts to go a little bit faster and faster and you start to hear that music pick up, it's like, okay, it's that, it's that built in anticipation that, you know, you're coming to the finale for the final drop. And, uh, yeah, I just, I just love the, um, and then, uh, like, like with the caverns and everything with the, 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 the special effects and everything. I, I love, cause I grew up going to, um, a local amusement park of mine out here called Kennywood okay. and they used to have what's well it's it's still there I don't know if they made any changes to it it's called the old mill and it has a lot of those aesthetics to those kind of rides and from growing mm -hmm. up with that and then going to Disneyland constantly it was nice to kind of go back to my childhood with the, the roots of like classic amusement park rides and as I said they're simple 
it's not over the top, but sometimes right. you don't need over the top. No, no, and the, yeah. and the log ride was cool because it was different than than say Splash Mountain, where Splash Mountain is a kind of a I don't know. It was it's weird when you're not dropping. It's kind of a slow kind of roll through the through the through mm -hmm. the scenes, right? You're you're going pretty slow yeah. with the log ride at night. Yeah, not that, yeah. It's it it just <laughs> it just keeps going. No, it's like white water. It's like the, it's almost more like akin to like the Grizzly River run, where the water's like, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's interesting. I didn't expect that. You know, I kind of like that energy. And you, you move remind me that. to have you do that sound effect again. That's going to be my new ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> so that was interesting, and and the theming was good. It was good. The theming was really good. You had a lot of animatronics in there. You know. <clears throat> like the miners and the like cowboys or whatever. I thought it was cool. You know, I thought it was really, really cool. Um, now the other, the other ride, the other attraction we did was um, the mine train. Now this is interesting because this kind of took me back. Now I'm not old enough to ride nature's wonderland, but I've seen it through multiple media, you know, and YouTube and all that stuff. And the vehicles very much reminded me of the nature's wonderland uh, ride vehicles, the trains. And then they had like, you know, it would sit in these little train cars and it was like like open top, you know, just like Nature's Wonderland. And you go through all these scenes. And Casual told me in the line, like when you go in this, when you go in this show building, it's gonna seem like it goes on forever, but it's really not. It's actually a pretty small space. They just really were they were really effective in how they utilize that space. He's absolutely correct on that. It felt like it went on forever. It felt like it was they were in this huge show building and you weren't. You know, and the cool thing too is like when you're going into this thing, it's a mine, and the, you, you have very low overhangs. It's a tight squeeze in that whole the entire attraction. You're going through these very tight little squeezes of these like little tunnels and everything. It adds to the authenticity. You know, I, that's how I would imagine a mine being is you know these little tight little like you know pathways. That it was great. Um, a lot of, again and a lot of animatronics a lot of show scenes a lot of really cool thematic elements so yeah it was it was for a regional park it was very 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 well done and like casual said before it was one of those things where it's like it it it, it nips on disney's ankles you know what i'm saying it's like right there it's like it's like really close to a disney attraction so mm -hmm. very very cool stuff very very cool stuff anything you want to add on on those attractions casual any thoughts or any comments on on the mind train of the log ride um both of them were inspirations for walt disney walt disney and walter knott were good friends and uh when walter knott brought walt disney to knott's berry farm to check out the calico mine ride when he brought him through the marquee and then walked him through the little back area walt was astounded he, he was like you could hide like 150 200 people back here <laughs> and he loved that idea that you could have people in line without it just being in front of the attraction with switchbacks and nobody would know how long the wait is at that point not to mention as you get in there you're already kind of in the attraction now you know right. the, the, that was the whole you know beginning of the pre-show that we know nowadays so yeah it, it, it's the, these are these are not just good attractions they are literally landmark attractions in th the theme park industry yeah no absolutely 100 percent. now uh, the, i think the next land that we went into was the boardwalk um mm -hmm. and we only rode because i'm a chicken so i didn't you know <laughs> we only rode the 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 mad mouse ride i think it's the uh what's that called the, uh, the coast, coast rider, rider. Mm -hmm. coast rider and it was kind of like a goofy sky school um, but smoother than Goofy Sky School, to be honest. And 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 George, I know you're laughing because we we had a amazing cast member. We we shout Jackie out in almost every video. Now. Every <laughs> video, every video. At some we, point, she 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 sneaks her way in there every single time. But yes, we we had an amazing time on Goofy Sky School. She changed the game for us for Goofy Sky School. Yeah. Check out our video, our Oogie Boogie Bash video, for more details. If we want to know about uh, cast member Jackie, who's amazing. Um, but um, it is a family friendly sequence, though, this this changing your mind on. Oh, yes, special. actually. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm actually kind of okay, glad okay. you actually mentioned that because you could actually <laughs> maybe do that for your live stream. It's it's the Goofy Sky School challenge is Jackie ended up having an experience with a family where uh, 
this guy was on the ride with her and he's trying to, he's asking her a whole bunch of questions. Like life questions. Like, like life what do you want to do after college? <laughs> like, what do you want to do after college? Where are you going with your life? All these really like deep kind of like, you know, questions. Go ahead, George. So, <laughs> so it just became a thing. So we wrote it once. And then since we were on uh, the, for the VIP <laughs> tour, she asked the cast member if we can go again because there was nobody in line. So we wrote it a second time. We thought, you know what? Let's try our knack at this. Like, let's just ask each other just a bunch of just <laughs> random shit. And I tell you what, Goofy Sky School was never on my list to, for me to get in line. I will now get in line for that ride like almost every single time because of it. Because I don't think we've laughed oh, that dude. hard on a ride. Of just us right. asking and answering different questions. So if if you're ever out there casual, you're doing a live stream, encourage people, try the Goofy Sky School Challenge. <laughs> I'm telling you, we, we were asking each other questions. I couldn't even focus. My brain was scrambled eggs on that whole track. <laughs> <laughs> we get to like, it was so funny. I don't know if, it, I think it was Jackie who asked you, if I'm not mistaken. But we get to the dip, the, the drop. And right before the drop, Jackie goes, George who's your favorite country singer? And George goes, Tim. And then we, we drop and the whole way down, George is like, McGraw. McGraw! <laughs> I lost it. I lost it. I couldn't eat. Oh, I never laughed that hard, George, in my life. You are a fool, man. That is so funny. <laughs> that was the best. Yeah, absolutely amazing. So it actually, you know, it translates probably very well to the Coast Rider. I mean, you know, if you're at Knott's, try it at Knott's, you know, it's the same mm -hmm. kind of attraction. You know, so yeah, a very cool, cool attraction. I will say this. I don't have very many negative things to say about Nods. I love the whole experience. I think the boardwalk though would probably be my least favorite. And it's just because I feel not a whole lot for, for someone like me to do because I'm, I'm not a co I'm not a thrill junkie. I'm more about like the environment. Right. So I feel like that offers the least for me, um, out of the whole park. But, um, what were your thoughts on, on that, uh, George? Yeah, I have to agree with you. Yeah, I have to agree with you. The boardwalk, I think, out of every, out of every area that I've experienced at Knotts, is just a little bit, you know, not as lackluster. Even though I am a throw junkie, I think yeah, it's are. just more so just, just like the the overall aesthetics. Because yeah. I too, I like, I love on top of the thrill rides, I love when something is engulfed with a lot of. Uh, creativity and a lot of right. attention to detail to the overall theme. And I feel like the, the boardwalk kind of uh, lacks at that. However, I, I did go into the back section of the park where I got to see like the, the Snoopy and the peanuts area. I thought oh, that was kind of yeah. cool. I actually enjoyed that. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the, the, the camp Snoopy. Now that was an area that I was very impressed with. I, another area that, that really kind of blew my mind. Number one, you walk in, it's all trees. You want to talk trees? The tree game in Camp Snoopy is on point. Okay. It's it's a forest in there. And there just seems to be a ton of like cute attractions for kids. You know, the the little um truck one where they can honk their horn, like adorable yeah. stuff. You got the the Snoopy one in the airplane, and you got the one where you lay down, even just a yeah. ton of variety. And I just thought it, it not only was it cute stuff for kids but it was like well done and aesthetically pleasing. Like the area looked cool. You know what I'm saying? See, and that's how I felt about a bug's land. You know, I know oh, a really? lot of people have different opinions of a bug's land where it's like yeah. the rides weren't like the full showcase for me, obviously, except for Heimlich's choo-choo train. I actually enjoyed that, but <laughs> yeah, but just the overall land itself. I loved where when you walk through, it took you to that bug's eye view. That if yeah. you looked up, you saw the the blades of grass. You saw the different, uh, you know, so the different sized, um, like the, uh, the, the, the um, what is it, the circus cookie box and and everything right. like for like in dis just different. Like I love that immersiveness. So like for Camp Snoopy, it was like it was geared towards young children. Yeah. But I love just the overall aesthetics, just to walk through, as you mentioned, OG, like with the trees. It actually felt like you were walking through like a kid's campground. Oh, it was so well done. And then it was like there's moments where you look over and there's this beautiful waterfall and rock work and everything. Um, really impressed with it. They had that one. They had that one sit down restaurant. Um, casual. It was the Grizzly. Grizzly Creek Lodge. Grizzly Creek Lodge. And I, I turned to casual when we were in there going, this is what Grizzly Peak needs. A sit-down restaurant like this. It was amazing. You walk in and it had like 
that rustic kind of woodsy feel. Did you get a chance to go into that, George, when you mm-hmm. were there? Yeah, I did the first time, not the second time, but the <clears> first time I did, uh, I did get to see that. And I, yeah, I do agree with you. I think Grizzly Grizzly Peak is lacking as much as it is aesthetically pleasing. I yeah. think it needs a a good sit down right. restaurant. No, hundred percent. And then, and then another area that I that I loved was the Roaring Twenties area. Now this is interesting because. I, I believe that's where we got our pizza. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, it's, you walk, you walk through here and there's like this, this overhead um, like walkway to the Walter Knott theater. And I kid you not, I kid you not. And this is a huge compliment right now. I'm going to really, I'm going to really, this is a huge compliment to Knott's right now. Um, when I'm walking through that area, the first thing I thought about was, I believe it's called the American waterfront over at Disney sea. Tokyo Disney Sea. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I. That's what immediately came to my mind because obviously the the Americana of it, but also that Walter Knott that that walkway reminded me a lot of like the um, at Disney Sea they actually have a similar overhead thing where the trolley goes, and right. it looks very similar to what they have at Knott's there. So I mean that's a huge. Com- I mean Disney Sea is like the king of all theme parks, you know, and mm-hmm. so it it looks fantastic, you know. And I was asking casual, oh, what what is, what is that? What's on there, you know? So I guess it's it's a, it's a pathway to the theater and everything. So that was really cool. I love that area. Um, I'm trying to think what other areas. I just love how each area blends in well. Where if you were to take the lands by themselves, right, right, like you have like the Roaring Twenties, you have like the the Western Grizzly Gulch, and you think, okay, yeah, we're gonna put them both together in a theme park. It's like, well, how in the hell is that gonna work out? Like that's yeah. like two different times, but it meshes well of how well aesthetically the park maneuvers where it it, it gracefully moves you in from one section to the other where it's not like so um like in your face yes exactly yeah no it was it was really well done it the theming on at that park was much 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 more flushed out than i expected oh the other the other land i want to talk about is fiesta village fiesta village and a casual I know you have a lot of thoughts. I don't know the name. I can I can never remember the name. What are those beautiful statues that you love? What are they called? The, the Alabrejas. The Alabrejas. Alabrejas. Yeah. Fantastic. They're like the creatures kind of similar for those at home, like our, our Disney people. That It's very similar to the very colorful creatures like in the movie Coco. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, those are my neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> 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 George. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah i mean but they had they had maybe like five or six of these and then they would have like a little plaque kind of explaining the personality of each one you know and very colorful they're huge too each one is probably if i were to guesstimate maybe six to eight feet tall they're mm-hmm. big you know and they add a lot of life and color now now casual you were telling me that this is kind of a new thing and this is one of the elements of the land that you kind of fell in love with when they when they reopened it right yeah, they, they just refreshed all of Fiesta Village and it just reopened this year earlier. And that was it, it was such an unexpected. I, I, I was I was so enamored with them. I couldn't believe that I was enjoying it as much as I was. I don't know what it was about them, but I was like, I love these statues. They're not even animatronics. There's nothing to them. And even at the time they didn't have the little plaques with their names and their personalities listed there. And that was exactly what I was saying. I was like, I want to know their names. I want to know, you know, what, what, what this one is like, what's, what's their, you know, character about. And sure enough, they had already fleshed it out. They just hadn't had a chance to put the signs out yet. Yeah. You know? And so it it was to me, I'm walking around and I was like, I love these characters. And then once I found out, Oh, they all have names, they all have personalities. I was like, they need a dark ride. These characters need to have a dark ride where they can live and breathe and move around and we can get to know them. But yeah, it's like there was something about those characters that I just fell in love with. And I I was like, I I can't get enough of them. And, you know, anytime I take somebody, I'm always I always ask them, okay, which one do you match with? You know, which one is the one that, you know, you associate with? And I always you know, have to take them over and, you know, Saltina, Mm -hmm. you know, the saber tooth rabbit. That's my (laughs) Calabrias. So, yeah. They are so cool, and you're right. I think I think like a like a dark ride in there, based on those characters, would be fantastic, absolutely fantastic. And actually, that whole Fiesta Village area is, I think, something that DCA needs. We talked a lot about it here on the channel, um, George. Like, like how you know Disneyland Forward is coming, 
like that whole area over there, I think it's the Pumbaa parking lot over there by the Pixar hotel. Um, I would love for them to build maybe not the whole area. It's huge, but a piece of it, like of a cocoa, like a little Mexican village and have that be basically like DCA's new Orleans square with these little winding little pathways and these Mexican like um, vendors and little like little food spots and stuff. And, and you can even have like people cooking outside and stuff for people like, like tacos or whatever. Oh God, it would be so incredible. Absolutely incredible. And I would love to have that, but Fiesta village brings a lot of that energy, you know, to, to knots. And I, I just think it's a great little area. And it's like, you know, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's a spirit of California in a lot of ways, you know, we, mm -hmm. uh, we're so heavily influenced by Latin culture out here. I think it's a nice little touch for that park. Um, now, before we wrap it up and we go to the magic key, the Disney price hikes, <laughs> um, any final thoughts on knots before we kind of, kind of move on? Anything you want to add, uh, George? Or yeah, actually I do. And, um, you both know me. I go balls to the wall, and I'm uh -oh. probably gonna I'm probably gonna ruffle some feathers by saying this. But you're ruffling I feathers. Actually, well, we're yes. not even to the magic key section. Yeah. Already ruffling feathers, <laughs> Um, <laughs> just for the two times that I've been out to knots, I can actually say I I enjoy going to knots a little bit more than Universal. Oh, geez. Wow. Yeah, you're really gonna ruffle feathers with yeah. that one. Yeah, <laughs> I do enjoy Universal, but. I, I don't know. I find a, a little more of a deeper connection to the, the understanding of the park, the cohesive of the park, the kinetic energy of the park. Um, and, and then also, plus not tiring myself out going back and forth up and down those fucking uh, escalators. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Well, I can actually, though, George, as, as, as controversial as your opinion might be, I actually kind of agree with you. I mean, I think because I'm a very much a, a, like an environment kind of guy when I go to these parks. Very chill, like casual, you know, like I was very chill. Like I'm not like a ride, 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 ride kind of guy. I like to just soak everything in. Knots gives me more of that. Than Universal. Now, before right. the Universal now, people, what, and, and, oh, and yeah, I was just going to say. Now, what saves Universal for me, Hollywood? That is, I'm right. speaking of Universal Hollywood. Right, right, is right. is the tram tour, like the tram yeah. tour, like that is just like on its own separate little Plymouth right. Rock. <laughs> you know, you know, right? It's on its own little thing. But here's the thing: Knott's is consistently themed well. Right. Like I was going through it. You go to the ghost town, you got the roaring twenties, you got the peanuts area. There's all these areas that are just so great. They're well done. It's consistently well themed, right? I feel like with Universal, though, I can see what you're saying, George, because I feel with Universal Hollywood, there's pockets of theming, but it's it's not it's not a cohesive. Like you can go to Nintendo World and you're immersed, but then you go outside and you're in the Transformers area, which is a bunch of sound stages. So it's like you, you constantly get, get you're in you get put into it and then you get yanked out of it. Where like knots, I felt more consistently in that world, mm -hmm. way more than I did than I do at Universal. Now I understand it's different. Universal Hollywood is way different than the Florida uh, Universal parks. I still haven't been to the Florida parks. I I, I do want to put that on my list for sure next time I go to Florida. But uh, I, I can see what you're saying though, George. As a theme park fan, I think knots might impress more people. If you're if you're into the environments and you're into that themed experience, I think knots is probably more impressive to be honest you know and that tram tour come on i i like the tram tour i like it a lot <laughs> yeah. but there's just not a whole lot of theme stuff in there you know in that park yeah. so i don't know i think we touched upon that in the bad thoughts podcast didn't we, jimmy fallon i think we talked about him yeah we bit. did talk about that with <laughs> <you>. <laughs> oh god <laughs> check that out when it, when it premieres that's that's wild <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> okay. So now that we actually discussed like all the bad negative stuff with that Knott's Berry Farm, yeah, yeah. let's get into the let's get into the 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 happy go lucky partial of the, uh, of the yeah, conversation. Right. I know this is gonna be wild. Here we go. Okay, this is this is a uh, courtesy of W D W N T, um, <clears throat> which actually I want to say real quick. I've actually been watching some of Tom lately. Uh, from w WDWNT, he, he does like on YouTube, there's like a podcast he does with a gentleman. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't remember the gentleman's name, but he's great. But um, they've been, they've been spicy lately, man. Like I've been, they did a whole thing on Disney adults and a whole thing on like Disney vloggers. Wow. He's touching upon some subjects. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can fuck around and get canceled, you know, but I give him credit for it. He's, he's talking about stuff that, 
is risk is kind of risky, but it, it makes for really, really good content, really interesting stuff. So yeah, check them out if you can, because the last couple of shows have been pretty good. Um, so anyway, um, they're <laughs> breaking news this morning. Disneyland Magic Key prices increase despite new sales of the Disneyland Magic Key annual pass uh, annual passes being suspended since September. Prices have been inc prices have been increasing on the passes affected immediately impacting all passes and renewals potential future sales. So this is this is kind of crazy. It says here that the Magic Key passes have increased in price by anywhere from fifty to one hundred and fifty dollars based on the pass type. So here's the breakdown. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on the numbers because I don't want to bore people with the numbers, but I mean, it's pretty significant. So the Inspire Key went from $16.49 to $15.99. It's a $50, $50 increase. The other three passes increased $150. Well, no, I'm sorry. The next two passes increased $150 and the Imagine Key went up $50. Okay. So this is interesting. Um, casual, I'll start with you. What are your thoughts on this? Now, this kind of happens every year, but sometimes these increases are, are less and more depending on the year. Right. What, what are your thoughts? How, is this kind of an egregious hike? Not so much. Where do you stand? Um, it feels like, a, a, as you mentioned, the two middle of the road passes got the higher increases. Yeah. Which feels like they're pushing people one way or the other. Well, you know, because, because the Believe Key, which is the one that I currently have, goes up $150. Parking is still not included. And they, I believe they've added additional blackout days. So the pass is going up in price and you're getting less for it. Yeah. That makes me say, okay, well, let me take a look at, you know, how many times do I plan to go versus, you know, optional days when I can go. It's basically saying, go ahead and spend the extra money up front and get the inspire key right They're just because of the, just because of in. the value how it's going to balance out for me you know so they're, they're getting more money up front from me if if i decide that i'm going to go ahead and continue with the magic key and upgrade that's how i see it and then with the other pass you know it's either okay well i can't go you know we're not we can't afford the inspire key for the family so we're going to have to just drop down again because of the value we're going to drop down and get the the lower priced key even though yeah it has more you know block out days and whatever but you know it, it ends up becoming you know more economical for some people could, so i think that's where they're going could that essentially be disney's long run goal anyway is to drop more people off of the magic keys in general cuz right now the inspire key you can't purchase Right. You know, so right. it's basically only for the renewals. Now, is that are the other keys available for purchase, or are they? Off? Nope. I, there are not. There none so of the keys are nothing. available for purchase. So no keys are available for purchase. So they're right. upping something that's not even available for purchase right now. Right. It's only for whoever has them for right. more so the renewal. So I wonder if it's Disney's way of saying, you know, I wonder if it will kind of encourage them to not renew because now they're trying to reduce down the amount of magic key holders that are entering the parks as opposite to per a person that's just purchasing maybe like the the three-day socal ticket or just right. a regular base ticket well we had that conversation just today me and my wife um she was asked you know because at the time i didn't re i didn't realize that i believe you can still upgrade but you have to be within your renewal window that's right. what somebody let me know online because I had some friends that tried to upgrade just the other day outside of their renewal window and they were not allowed to upgrade. So, uh, it, but from what I've heard is that within the renewal window, you can upgrade if you want or downgrade, I guess. Um, so we were talking about that before I found that out and she was asking, well, what are you going to do for your YouTube channel? And I said, well, if I don't get the pass, they, you know, they often offer the, you know, three day Southern California pass, you know, there's, you know, other deals sometimes that they run, you know, throughout the year. Maybe that's just what I do. Right. And that, that, I mean, that's, you know, somebody who loves going to the park and I'm sitting there weighing my options as to, you know, okay, well, if I do this and I do that, you know, how can I save some money? So, yeah, I, I think that's pretty accurate, George, that they're trying to thin the herd a little bit. Yeah, by not having anyone. Uh, okay, here's a little personal story. At my job, we were working in the office. Um, 
up until 2017, right? Because the rent at that building was so high. It's California. So of course, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so the rent was so high. So the, the corporate decided, well, we're going to close down the California office and we're going to make the California people work from home. Okay. Here's the thing though. They weren't hiring any new California people. So they knew because they they gave you the option. If you don't want to work from home, you, you can you can quit. We'll give you the package or whatever to leave. Right. So they they knew that. So they knew they were going to lose people. Some some of these people are, are inevitably going to leave. So by by knowing that and not hiring any more in California people, they're thinning the California herd. Right. Because you're you're losing, but you're never replacing. Right. And that might be what they're doing here. They're losing people because event, uh, some people will fall off. Some people will say it's not worth it, you know, but they're not replenishing and not putting more people into the system. Now that might change, you know, Wastelines McCarthy, you know, she's no longer with us. Well, not like that. That sounds terrible. Yeah. She's no longer with the, <laughs> she's no no longer with the company. She's, <laughs> right, right. She's no longer with the company. Okay. <laughs> Make that very clear. She ate um, some bad beans. Yeah. Right. <laughs> But, but she would talk about those levers, you know, so it's possible mm -hmm. that they reopen these. They probably will. But it is interesting, though, that they that they, they stopped them all and they, they raise these prices. Now, part of this equation also might be that Magic Key settlement because it, it does coincide. I think they stopped all sales around the time that settlement dropped. Right. There might be something with that, maybe the legality of it or who knows what, you know, but um. It's fascinating, man. I'm kind of to the point now where it's like, okay, the price hikes each year are not a surprise anymore. Like fans need to just kind of understand it's going to happen every right. year, you know? But I think that it's, it's, it's expected, but I think that it's like, at this point, it's sort of like, I think people just need to make their own decision for them themselves and their family. Like what's worth it. Right. So like, okay, at this point, Disney's going to raise their prices every year. Is it worth it for me? To, to, to renew again or not. And if it's not, you should definitely vote with your wallet. And that, I've been saying that for a long time. If it's not worth it and you feel like they're, they're really kind of like they're overcharging and they're not giving enough and all that, I would, I would say don't renew it because if you, what, I think that one of the big problems with a lot of the community is like they, they complain on Twitter and this has been going on and even before Twitter, I'm telling you, I've been, I've been in this community since the AOL news group days. Okay. <laughs> this has been a tale as old as time. The complaining about the prices and then just handing Disney your money. It's just a, a constant thing, you know? Right. Yes, everyone's mad on Twitter today, but when their renewal comes up in a month, two months, five months, whenever, they're going to happily give them their money. People need to stop doing that because honestly, it shows Disney that you're okay with it. They, they know, okay, yeah, we'll get a lot of talk on Twitter. At the end of the day, though, these fans are still going to line up. That's a problem. That's a huge problem. I think fans need to start voting with their wallet and finding out what's good for you and your family and deciding to not maybe not make that call, maybe not renewing. I, I think as long as we keep giving into it, I think they're going to keep keep raising these prices. Also, I do think there is an element here of Disney just being in the rut right now. Disney as a company is looking to make money any way they can. The parks division is really the only division making any kind of real money. You know, you have inflation, which is another big element of this. Yep. You know, I, I see a lot of people talk about every time I see a movie from uh, come out on in theaters, like, you know, Little Mermaid beat Cinderella opening weekend. And everyone says, oh, well, inflation, inflation, right? Well, that goes for this, too. There's inflation here. And, and that's going to impact the um, what Disney's going to do with this stuff. So there's a lot of factors at play here. But, George, what, what, what do you have to add to that? Well, and I also was reading a, an article today, and it was mentioning about that uh, – I actually forget the website, but it was actually saying this is actually somewhat of a good move on Disney's part due to the fact because of the economy and the financial struggle the company's going through right now. And as you had mentioned, OG, the, the theme park division is th the section of the company that's booming because right. every single time that I'm out there, Disneyland's packed. It's so it's like yeah. they're, they're going to utilize that notion to say, OK, if all these people are coming in anyway, it's that time of year, you know, let's let's boost it up. And honestly, I'm a big component. I do agree with you, OG. Vote for your wallet. But I am one of those suckers that it's like, you know, I'll go no matter what. And I personally feel like that's why God gave us two kidneys. I can live with one, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, and that's exactly why he gave it to us. I'm sure, George. That's exactly yeah. why. 
<laughs> but uh, so this article was also explaining because of the um, the uh, speaking just of Disneyland because there yeah. was uh, across the board of Disney a lot of price hikes everywhere. Walt Disney World, the Crazy. food, the parking. Um, but just speaking for Disneyland, because that they are essentially going to be moving with Disneyland forward for the expansion a lot of people were wondering and it mentioned in this article that that could be a key component that down the road um whenever that this decision is going to be made in the in the very beginning of 2024 with the anaheim city console could that essentially become part of the equation because as they do these expansions and this is what the guests want this is what the people want this is what i want i want to see expansion i want to see growth i want to see change but you, we also, as a community, have to understand the more that they add, the more that they expand and grow and change, it's also going to change the dollar sign to right. that price value. You add square foot. If you add square feet to your house, it's it's a bigger house. <laughs> okay, it, right. it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna cost more to buy that house. You know what I'm saying? So the more they add to it, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, Universal did major hikes when they expanded with Harry Potter. I mean, you wouldn't know it. No one talks about it, <laughs> but they did, you know, and that's normal though. I mean, that is normal, but I, but I understand though. I understand people's frustration with it. I understand yeah. it's, it's a lot, but at the same time, I also understand the company side of it. Look, not only is it expensive to, to build this stuff, like you said, with Disneyland forward and everything like that, but now there's like this movement with, with like with, with uh, cast members and just workers in general with various industries where they, they're asking for more money. All right. And rightfully so. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But when you when you also spend more on labor, you're going to have to offset that somehow, you know, and that might come in the form of, you know, higher tickets and stuff like that. And so it's just kind of well, we know the, Bob Iger isn't going to get rid of that second shower. So <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> oh, he's not giving that up, dude. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. I wish I man. I wish I had like a shower drop in here. I wish I had like a. I got, I, I'll get one. I'll get one. Like the shower turning on or something. That's a good Bob Iger thing. I, I got to get one. <laughs> get like a, get like a shower sun and then maybe add it to the like the. Well, I don't know if you could use it because of the copyright things, but like of the the psycho music. The oh, like hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Yeah. yeah the well, thing that's well, interesting though is it for all the chatter that's online and in Twitter and whatever. You don't see it tied to Bob Iger's name the way you would have if Chapek was still. That CEO. is true. That is true. If Chapek was CEO, everybody would be blaming Chapek. You'd have his name and him, you know, the memes would be through the roof right now. We'd be cracking up at him. But, you know, because it's Iger, it's just, you know, oh, I can't believe they're raising prices. And that's it. Whereas if it was Chapek, it's like, Chapek, that numbers guy, that greedy, no good. And he's right. ruining the company and all this stuff. And, you know. And being that you brought that, and being that you brought that up, casual, I wanted to ask you because we had just recently done uh, a video with Mr. Seymour Duck about the Nelson Peltz possibly mm. taking like a, a seat on the board, and there was a Bloomberg article saying, you know, that Iger is just spent. You know, he's exhausted. He's tired <laughs> out. You know, he wasn't expecting to come into back into the company with this amount of chaos. What's what's your take on on that? That if Nelson Peltz was to essentially get a seat on the board, do you think that would be beneficial to the company? Do you think that's what Iger essentially wants? Do you think the two of them would butt heads? Like, what's your take on it? Uh, I don't know. It it, it depends. You know, we're trying to read minds basically, but um, I don't think it would have a tremendous impact unless Iger wants to go that direction. Because if if Iger doesn't want to go that direction, he's he's the one you know. Peltz is the one guy on the board. It's just going to be you know noise in in the tabloids and whatever. It's not going to not going to be anything that has any you know fundamental impact on the company. It's just going to be you know that one squeaky wheel that you got to try to shut up every now and then. You know, 100%. but but like you said, if Iger wants to go that direction, he now has his foil. Right. Whereas, you know, he's got someone that can, you know, who's going to rock the boat and start making this thing. And he's going to, you know, well, you know, we have to kind of, you know, listen to the board. And he's going to yeah. make decisions that he wanted to make, but wouldn't have been able to make if he didn't have somebody that he could, you know, JPEG it. 
with. Yeah. If Nelson Peltz does get in with the seat on the board and uh, directs Iger to get rid of that second shower, do you think Iger would give in? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not giving in. Yeah, that's one of those you know immovable points right there. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no. But I know Bob if I could take will... a second shower. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Iger will flip that board table over so fast. He's like, no way. <laughs> No way. Well, I'm very curious, though, how many like because there's even talk, you know, we don't know for sure yet, but there's talk that Pelts wants to bring multiple people onto the board. So if that's the case, then, you know, it might it might be a little bit of an issue for Iger if, if he's if he's kind of butting heads with him, because now you have you might have stalemates on the board or the, with the voting and all that. If, if he can get two or three people on that board, it might cause a problem, you know? Yeah. So we'll see, you know, uh, it's very, I'm very curious how that whole thing is going to pan out. I do believe though, that Pelts will eventually get his, either himself and, or a few other of his guys and gals on that board. I think, it's but bad. I do love what you said before OG um, on our previous show that you said that there are a lot of, um, Iger loyalists, you know, right. on the board. So sometimes mm. like when you bring in someone from a different perspective and you kind of have a little bit of a, a head butting type of thing, that's where you get stuff done, you yeah. know, rather than just say, you know, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go do it. Yep. Okay. We're good. You know? And it's like, then you don't get anywhere. No, you don't. Yeah. It, 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 having that disagreement is good. And look, it's not a coincidence, right? Bob Iger in 2012, he was a CEO and chairman of the board in 2012. And then two or three years later, you started to see kind of like the unraveling of like this machine a little bit, right? With like Lewis film and like things started to start, you didn't see it immediately, but things started to trend in the wrong direction after that. There's a reason for that because he didn't have anyone to push back. It was, he was the king, supreme ruler of Disney and anything, anything he said, they, they rubber stamped it, right? That's a problem. You want to have like somebody push back on you. You want to have those checks and balances a little bit. So it could be a good thing. If Pelts and his people get in there, they might they might push back enough where Iger has to compromise and they have to work stuff out. And we might get a better product in return. Because I do believe that when he had all the power in 2012, we saw what happened. It wasn't necessarily great you know so and he admitted that i mean i think he even said in like in one of these interviews when he left like you know i was kind of getting a little bit like you know it was my way or the highway and i think he even acknowledged that you know so you don't ever want to have that you know like even here on the channel like i don't if george if you come to me and like hey george i mean and you're like hey og you know um i don't think this is a good idea or you know it's it's good to play these different uh, uh, perspectives off each other. It's not just like oh yeah no fuck you George. It's my channel. Fuck you. Yeah, I'm not listening to you, man. Blah blah blah. You don't do that. You don't do that. You know because that, that doesn't help well, any. Well, well, being that we're on the subject matter, I do have a list of things I wanted to run by you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You, you want to have that push and push and pull a little bit. You know, you don't want to have an mm -hmm. echo chamber of just everyone saying the same thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't want that, you know? And Bob Iger, I think there's a little bit of that in there. And I think maybe, like you said, George, maybe even right now with the current board, you know, it's not so. Do you, do you think kind of going back to all these price hikes, do you think that was a, a decision made because now Nelson Peltz is back? in the spotlight to get a, a seat on the board. Could that be a strategic move to mm. kind of answer back to him, sort of speak? You know, it's interesting because Pelts was complaining that they were, they were overpricing the parks. Um, so that's interesting that they would kind of like give them the middle finger and like do the hikes now, <laughs> but maybe it's like a black Friday thing. And what, I, what I'm trying to say here is like, you know, black Friday, right? What these retailers do is they hike the price right before Black Friday, and then they discount it. So when you get the discount, it goes back to the normal price. <laughs> right. right. Yes. yes. So maybe that's Iger's plan. Hey, we'll hike it up. So when Pelt gets in here and lowers it, we're back to where we were before. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like well, don't chances. forget, they, they, they did try to soften the blow with the kids ticket offer that's coming early next year, where it's $50 right. for a child's ticket. So. And they and they have done a lot of the the hotel discounts for Walt Disney World as well, that yeah. like the twenty five percent off, you know, depending on like uh, which hotel you're staying at, like deluxe moderate right. value. So yeah, so they they kind of like mix it in there, you know, a little bit. But I think 
I, I feel like fans would be less disgruntled once we know more of like what is the future of the Disney parks. You right. know, I think that we're just kind of getting like, again, the, the, the what ifs, the maybes. Oh, this could happen. Or what if we did this? Should we do that? I think once we get a clear perspective of like where – what direction they want to take the parks and get us excited about something and put something back into the pipeline. I think then people would say, okay, well there's a reasoning for these price hikes. Right. You know, I feel like that they're just giving us the price hikes without giving us anything to look forward to. That's right. fair. No, that's absolutely yeah. fair. Well, the other thing too is it's kind of weird because when Chapek was in there, Bob Iger was talking, it might've been when he was in there or when Bob Iger took over in November. I don't really remember exactly the timeline, but Bob Iger made a statement where he was saying like, he thought that the, they were too aggressive on the price hikes. This was like back like a year ago. Mm -hmm. And then here we are now with pretty aggressive price hikes. So that's weird. It's like, so did he get in there and maybe saw maybe the math is, you know, like may, sometimes when you're on the outside, you have opinions. And then when you get on the inside, it's like, well, okay. I can kind of see the point, you know, is that what happened or like that? It was kind of strange because he was complaining about that and now he's doing that. So I yeah, don't know. Well, I mean, I, I, uh, yeah, I think he not, just didn't really realize like how bad the company is. And I think that's where it, it kind of caught him off guard, but uh, go ahead casual. Well, I was going to ask, you know, what, what were the things that JPEG had in place that Iger completely undid or, you know, reeled back? I don't. I don't remember many yeah. items, if anything. Very minimal. So, but that's what I mean. So it's like, okay, so everybody was, you know, JPEG bad, JPEG bad. You know, what 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 changed with Iger coming back? He's had a year now, and you know, here we are, almost at the one year mark, and there's price hikes coming, you know, across the board. And it's not to say that, oh, you know, they're just being greedy. It's everywhere. I mean, you go to the grocery store everything's higher priced yeah. Yeah. so naturally disney as a business it's going to have to do that i mean and and to to look at knots they had to remove some items from their restaurants because the prices are just too high the fireman's barbecue does not have the flank steak sandwich anymore those wow. bastards i know <laughs> but but that's because beef is just too too much right. and for them to be able to offer it they would probably have to sell it at you know 29 dollars for a steak sandwich and then you'd have people complaining about that when they get their, you know, yeah. thirty dollars steak sandwich and go, "What the heck is this? Thirty bucks?" I guess there goes partial of my liver as well. <laughs> <laughs> and that, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right, Cattle. Beautifully said. Like that. That's that's the thing that that's the dilemma a lot of these companies are in. I, I just saw it today on Twitter, Chipotle is raising prices again yep. for like the fourth time in a year or something. But it's like these companies. Yes, I, I, it's easy. I think for people just to fall back on like, oh, they're greedy. Right. Right. I get it. They're corporations. That's like the low hanging fruit kind of thing. Oh, they're greedy. And that's an element of it for sure. But there is a lot going on right now with supply chain, you know, shortages and like inflation and just the overall economy and just things kind of, you know, and, and all, the, all these companies, you know, like you, like we were talking about it at Knott's, you know, I mean, even Knott's, they're, 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 they're making moves. Disney's making moves. You know, companies outside of theme parks are making moves. Yeah. I think it's the reality we live in right now, unfortunately. But with Disney, it's a very emotional animal, you know, in right. terms of like people are just so into it. You know, I was joking before about how people don't really, you know, comment on the on the universal um, price hikes, and a lot of that is because it's not the emotional thing that Disney is. Disney's in a very emotional thing, and you feel like you're a lot of fans feel like they're losing something by not being able to go. You know, it's yeah. different. You know. Yeah, but here, here, here's the thing. I do want to bring this up, and I will shill for Knott's a little bit here. Go for it. At Knott's Berry Farm, you can get, right now, you can get a 2024 season pass for $99. And not only is it good for all of 2024, it starts the day you purchase at 2023, and you get the rest of this year. To add parking to the pass is $85. And again, it starts when you purchase this year for the rest of 2023. If you add the all season dining plan to your pass, it's good from the day you purchase all the way through the end of 2024. If you get wow. the all season drink plan, again, good from the day you purchase all the way through 2024. 
If you had all of those items, so you have a not season pass, zero blackout days, parking, zero blackout days, a all season dining where you get two entree items every time you visit the park, you know, within, you know, there's a four hour window where you've got a, you know, from your first meal to your second and your all season drink plan where you can get a, a fountain beverage every 15 minutes. All of that would cost you $379 plus tax and fees. So it'd be wow. basically about $400 for all That's of that. That's crazy. Where if you live close to Knott's, you could literally eat there every single day for $150. That's incredible. Wow. And see, yeah. that's incredible. Now, does that also go by two of like the number of people that go through the turnstiles? Do, do you think like they're looking at those kind of numbers where, as I said, I love knots. I actually grew a high appreciation for it just by going twice. You know, it's, it's, that's a mm -hmm. major impact. But do they get the same amount of volume that that Disneyland does? No, 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 the numbers aren't the same. No, not at all. I, I mean, I don't, I don't even think they could just be, just based on the size of the park. So, but if if you're sad about your Disneyland, you know, price hike, there's options. There's options. Absolutely. You know? There's there's absolutely options, and I can vouch for knots now. You know, I can like a true Italian, like the mob. I can vouch for this guy. You know, I can vouch for. <laughs> I can vouch for knots. You know, knots is a good experience. It's a really good experience, and it's a good value. Now, yeah, that deal that knots provides, you could never do that at Disneyland just because it's the demand would be. I mean, it would be insane if Disneyland right. offered like a thirty five dollar dining plan. Oh my god, dude. Like it would be insane in there, you know, because it's a different beast. Disneyland right. is like the different, you know, but Knott's can get away with that and they're successful in doing that, you know? So yeah. if you're at, Dis yeah, at you're Disneyland, at Disneyland, you can pay $35 to go stand in a slightly shorter line. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's and exactly. Slightly, slightly, <laughs> slightly, slightly. So casual had a blast with you. Uh, thank, I want to thank you again so much for inviting me to Nas. Had a, had a really good time with you, man. We got to do it again very soon. We got to do Disneyland again very soon. George, you as well, brother. You got to fly down here. Get get your ass to Cali. Let's go to Knott's <laughs> and Disney and all that stuff. You know, but that's um, how we do it. <laughs> that's how we do it. That's how we do it. But casual, if you could remind everybody at home where they can find you on social media, sir. Yeah, you can find me on YouTube, on Twitter, slash X, and Instagram, all of them at Theme Park Casual. And I should be going live at the parks this coming Friday for October 13th, which is Friday the 13th. So we're hoping for a good, fun, spooky time over at Disneyland this Friday. Nice, 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 nice. Check them out this Friday the 13th. I, I think I actually have a spooky drop. Let's see. Do I? Yeah, I do. I got a spooky drop. Here we go. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Nice. And right over here, we got the Italiano Citrus George, host of the Walt Disney World Show Citrus Corner. George, if you could let everybody home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also check out the podcast, A Walk with Walt. And of course, you'll find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you all for watching. Comment down below with everything we talked about, Knott's Berry Farm. Any opinions you have about Knott's, comment down below. Any opinions you have about these Magic Key price hikes, crazy stuff. Uh, yeah, comment down below. We would love to hear from you. And in honor of the price hikes, I got, I'm going to drop not just one. I'm dropping two money drops on the way out. So, everybody, have a great night. Thank you for watching. OG Bye. Give me the Got a bunch of zeros, I could bag a new